good day children so now we move on to the second part of the lesson bond of love now we saw in the first part how a sloth bear was uh, adopted by uh, the narrator who takes the uh, bear a baby bear as a pet for his wife and uh, the how he happened to come across the bear was you know when he was on a hunting trip you know uh, uh, the mother bear was killed and thus the narrator adopts the baby bear and uh, the bear uh, turned out to be quite fun and you know uh, always happy and uh, you know the wife of the narrator was quite delighted to have the uh, bear and she called him bruno and the bear had uh, anything and everything to eat and drink and uh, the bear was also attached towards the two alsatian dogs and also to all the children who lived uh, uh, you know in the bungalow you know the tenants uh, and uh, the bear was left free in his younger days but uh, as he grew uh, bigger he had to be chained because he could be a threat to the children in between what happened was you know there was an accident where the bear consumed uh, poison and uh, thus he got paralyzed and finally the narrator took him to the vet and they gave him a an antidote and saved him and another time he uh, you know drank uh, a gallon of uh, old engine oil and uh, again but that did have any effect on the bear's uh, health and uh, now that uh, the wife was of the narrator was so attached to the bear that you know the bear was now called as uh, baba and the bear could imitate uh, you know holding a gun cradling a baby okay and uh, so it was uh, quite uh, entertaining for the narrator and his family and uh, but then since it grew bigger it was you know it could be a threat to the people that you know they decided to send uh, bruno to a uh, zoo in mysore now what happened uh, was you know both the narrator's wife and bruno uh, was fretting over there because you know they missed each other and uh, so you know the wife used to regularly enquire about uh, baba's health now moving on after that friends visiting mysore were begged to make a point of going to the zoo and seeing how baba was getting along they reported that he was well but looked very thin and sad all the keepers at the zoo said he was fretting for 3 months i managed to restrain my wife from visiting mysore then she said one day i must see baba either you take me by car or i'll go by myself or i'll go myself by bus or train so i took her by car so what happened was uh, you know uh, the narrator's wife would ask her friends who were visiting mysore to visit baba and check out on him and everyone gave a similar report that you know baba was fine but he appeared very thin and sad and even the staff at the zoo said that you know he seemed quite worried so the narrator was able to restrain his wife or stop his wife from visiting the zoo for 3 months but one day she said that you know she wanted to see baba and if the narrator doesn't take her then she would go there by herself uh, through train or bus but finally they went to see baba at the zoo in the car friends had conjectured that the bear would not recognize her i had thought so too but while she was yet some yards from his cage baba saw her and recognized her he howled with happiness she ran up to him petted him through the bars and he stood on his head in delight conjectured means formed an opinion by guessing so their friends had actually predicted that baba would not recognize her and even the narrator thought that too but to his amazement you know he just she was just few steps away from the cage when baba saw her and you know she, he recognized her he screamed with happiness and she ran up to him and petted him and he was very happy to have her back for the next 3 hours she would not leave that cage she gave him tea lemonade cakes ice cream and what not then closing time came and we had to leave my wife cried bitterly baba cried bitterly even the hardened curator and the keepers felt depressed as for me i had reconciled myself to what i knew was going to happen next so you know she remained there for 3 hours and she fed baba different things which were his favorites now as the zoo had to close they had to leave so the narrator's wife did not want to leave baba and both of them cried quite bitterly even the zoo in charge was sad the narrator was fine because he knew that you know the next step would be to uh, you know to take baba back along to bangalore oh please sir she asked the curator may i have my baba back 
Hesitantly, he answered, Madam, he belongs to the zoo and is government property now. I cannot give away government property. But if my boss, the superintendent, Bangalore, agrees, certainly you may have him back. So, the wife requested the in charge that, you know, she wanted to take Baba back. But he replied that the bear was now government property and that she needed permission from the superintendent in Bangalore. They followed the return journey to Bangalore and a visit to the superintendent's Bangalore. A tearful pleading, Baba and I are both fretting for each other. Will you please give him back to me? He was a kind-hearted man and consented. Not only that, but he wrote to the curator telling him to lend us a cage for transporting the bear to Bangalore. So, you know, they returned uh, to Bangalore and they visited the superintendent at just Bangalore. And the wife cried and requested that, you know, both uh, Baba and her, you know, they had been worrying about each other. So, she requested to have Baba back. Since the superintendent was a kind-hearted man, he accepted her request and he wrote to the zoo in charge to arrange a cage to transport Baba to Bangalore. Back we went to Mysore again armed with the superintendent's letter. Baba was driven into a small cage and hoisted on top of the car. The cage was tied securely and a slow and careful return journey to Bangalore was accomplished. So, they uh, you know, went back to Mysore and uh, they also had the superintendent's letter with them. And uh, the Baba was put in a cage and the cage was kept on the top of the car. It was tied securely. Hoisted means uh, raised by means of ropes or pulleys. Accomplished means completed and they returned back to Bangalore. Once home, a squad of coolies were engaged for special work in a compound. An island was made for Baba. It was 20 feet long and 15 feet wide and was surrounded by a dry pit or moat, 6 feet wide and 7 feet deep. A wooden box that once housed fowls was brought and put on the island for Baba to sleep in at night. Straw was placed inside to keep him warm and his baby the gnarled stump along with his gun, the piece of bamboo, both of which had been sentimentally preserved since he had been sent away to the zoo, were put back for him to play with. Squat means team, gnarled means rugged or twisted. So, at their home in Bangalore, a team of workers was employed to execute some work in the backyard. Since Baba was a full-grown bear, you know, he had to be kept isolated. So, they built an island which was 20 feet long and 15 feet wide and it was surrounded by a dry pit which was 6 feet wide and 7 feet deep. And it was made, you know, you, I think it's similar to the kind of island that is uh, made in zoos if you have seen. Uh, tigers and bears kept, you know, that, that's the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the island that is made. And it was made like this because, you know, the bear would not be able to cross the pit over to areas that were inhabited by people because, you know, they can harm them. So, things which were used by Baba was kept securely and they were kept on the island. They were, uh, there was also a wooden box which was previously used to keep uh, hens and, you know, fowls and uh, now it will be used by Baba to sleep at the night. And straw was kept inside the box to keep him warm. And the piece of wood which Baba cradled like a baby and the stick which he used to point as a gun was also placed on the island so that he could play with them. In a few days, the coolies hoisted the cage onto the island and Baba was released. He was delighted. Standing on his hind legs, he pointed his gun and cradled his baby. My wife spent hours sitting on a chair there while he sat on her lap. He was 15 months old and pretty heavy too. So, when the place was ready, the workers placed the cage on the island and Baba was removed from it. He was happy to be free and he stood on his back legs and pointed the stick and cradled the piece of wood. The narrator's wife spent many hours with him as he lay on her lap, uh, all as if, you know, he was, uh, even though he was uh, 15 months old and he was quite heavy in weight. The way my wife reaches the island and leaves it is interesting. I have tied a rope to the overhanging branch of a mango tree with a loop at its end. Putting one foot in the loop, she kicks off with the other to, the, to bridge the six-foot gap that constitutes the width of the surrounding pit. The return journey is made the same way. But who can say now that a sloth bear has no sense of affection, no memory and no individual characteristics? So, 
the narrator's wife visited baba quite frequently and the way in which she reaches and leaves the island is quite interesting the uh, the narrator tied a rope to the mango tree with a loop at one hand so the narrator's wife would place one foot in the loop and she would kick off with the other then she would fly in the air to cover the 6 foot long distance to reach this island then she would make the return trip in a similar manner so on seeing this affection shared by baba and the narrator's wife we can conclude that you know animals have emotions they remember people and all of them have individual qualities just like human beings have so hope you understood this lesson okay so uh, thank you children have a nice day